Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Kaiser here. Now I noticed in some of your comments in the past, as well as lots of talk in the Discord chat, different multiple channels, that some people have been very frustrated with the game. And this video is a very chill video, just telling you my ways of dealing with tilt. And there are non-scientific tips though. Let's begin. Tip number one, turn things down a little bit. I'm gonna show you in the game. There are two things you can turn down. You can turn down the sound or turn off the sound completely. SFX and background music. And also you can turn off sticker chat, which is your opponents using emojis to talk to you or communicate to you. Usually they like to use one of the two emojis. So you, as you can see my music and my SFX is zero. So when people kill me out of nowhere, there's no sound to make me tilted, there's nothing. And my opponents cannot show their stickers to me. Therefore, they cannot show me the booba victory sign 20 times in a row before they kill me at the very last second. And these two things can help you a lot. Now, my reasoning behind this, and I have, this is non-scientific by the way, this is highly, highly based on my situation and it might not even work for you. But I'm just telling you my story so that if if it applies to you, use it. If not, just discard it. And you take what you have and build around it. The lesser stimuli you take in, the lesser tendency you have to be angry or frustrated at the enemy. Because what the, enem what the enemy can do, your opponent can do, is throw at you as many information as possible. But non-beneficial information, saying that you are useless, you are trash, by using their emojis, or by playing in a certain way or taking a very long time before ending their turn especially if they have a zero cost in their hand and they just don't want to play it at the end of the turn so they wait like 50 seconds just to make you angry the lesser stimuli you take in the lesser tendency you have to be angry or frustrated at the end because you don't see it you can't react to it so it's kind of like out of sight out of mind and even as frustrated as you are i don't recommend you to spam stickers to the next opponent you fight because of the way you're treated in the previous game this is just a recommendation i would recommend you not to continue the cycle and end up just as bad as your opponent it is not worth your time it is like someone punches you in the eye and then you punches you punch them in the eye and everyone in the, in the entire world uses this same axiom axiom that if you punch me i punch you back but harder an eye for an eye Whole world goes blind. I have no idea who said that. Type in the comments who said that. I think it was Muhammad Gandhi. I'm not sure. I'm not sure really. In the same way, everything I say here, you should take with two kilograms of salt because it only applies in your situation if you, if you can derive what I'm telling you and apply it there. Because a lot of things are different. Just like Nabil Ravi Khan used to say, play stupid game, win stupid prizes. Some games are not worth playing, and the trash talk game is not worth playing if it makes you frustrated more than when you came into the game. Second tip, go on autopilot mode. Now, I'm not sure why, but I notice streamers, when they play, they are not so invested in the game to the point where every win or loss affects them. And it is maybe because they have a chat to talk to. So they have people to, you know, engage with, talk with, contend with, and I don't do this, I don't stream. Maybe, should I stream? Uh, anyways, they have people to talk to, so they don't, they're not in the moment so much. They are still talking to their chat, they're playing the game, and they go back to chat. And the second point is to open multiple tabs of things at once. Play a game on a smaller screen, and play some music, maybe Lo-Fi Girl, I don't know. They have very good non-copyright uh, non music, not a royalty-free music. Or watch a movie, or watch a YouTube video, you know? There are lots of good podcasts also, which can calm you down it takes your mind off the game and you might be saying oh no this is terrible this is terrible advice my play is going to go down my quality of of moves is going to go down and there's no sugar coating it yes it will go down but if your intuition is good if you watch my previous video on building up your gut feeling and your intuition if your intuition and gut feeling is good it's not going to go down so much because you're on autopilot mode your brain and your fingers your hands know exactly what moves to make already before you even make it so in a way you're playing on autopilot mode 
but your brain isn't too focused on the on the situation and the outcome. So in a way, you don't you won't react to it so much because you're busy on something else. For example, if your opponent is spamming stickers at you and you forgot to turn it off, right? But you're watching a movie on the side. Just don't just ignore your opponent. Just watch your movie on a different screen, and it helps you keep your mood chill and relaxed. Now, one last tip: if you have more tips for how you deal with a tilt, you can post in the comments because I'd like to learn as well. I only have three tips for now and I've been juggling between tip 1 and tip 3 or tip 2 and tip 1. I've been juggling between them just so that I can cope with some of the very frustrating season especially if there is no balance changes and things get frustrating. So the final tip I want to give you is that you can just stop playing the game, take a break and come back. There's a reason why Kit Kat is so famous in this world because it tells you to take a break from whatever you're doing and come back with a clear mind and a calm heart. Sometimes it's good to just go outside, you know, walk around I think I even remember Gordon Ramsay telling like really hot-headed employees to go take a walk and come back if they are very angry and they get into a heated argument with him or someone else. And so I personally, this I used to do this during V2 when it gets very hard to play sometimes because back then Poison Meta was so strong and I cannot beat Poison. I personally just turn off the Axie game. I go watch a movie, I go play another game, I go do anything wash the plates, do my chores, and I come back when I'm clear-headed and calm. And by that time also, because in V2, it takes about maybe 4 hours to complete 60 energy, maybe 4 to 5 hours. So when I come back after 5 hours, I notice that the players all change already. And the, com the, the strategies and comps I'm bad against, sometimes they change and they appear at different time frames. It's like finding a different Pokemon at a different time frame, bad comparison. But maybe it's, a just, maybe it's just a coincidence? I don't know taking a break and coming back resets my emotions. So at the very least, I know that it will reset me. Because if I'm busy doing something else, let's just say if my mind is occupied on washing my plates or, or sweeping the floor or vacuuming the couch and whatnot, my brain has no time to think about the previous game in Axie where I, I messed up or I made a mistake or whatever. And one personal thing about me, I really don't like Blood Moon teams. They take too much time. They have, they have the most trash talk per team. Like comparing with all the other teams I face, they trash talk more than any other team. Because if you're fighting against aggro, the games end really fast. They don't have time to trash talk. They, 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 they don't even realize it, they're dead already. Whereas if you're fighting a sustained team, they take all the sweet time they want. And sometimes they do it as a choice. Let's conclude. Tilt is a choice. You can always choose to let it go. It's my opinion by the way. <laughs> Sometimes it is important to focus what you can control rather than beat yourself up for things you cannot control. Especially when it comes to balance changes, cards being way too powerful, certain strategies being way too powerful. So if a certain card is too strong, okay, accept it is way too strong. But then start to think, really think, break down your entire team into all the tools you know and what with the tools you have, how can you take can you make the best out of the situation to maximize your win rate against? Is a certain team too strong? Is poison too strong in the matter for like three leftover potions and they are like dominating? Okay, these players are still human beings. Therefore, once they are finished playing their games, if you notice like there's like a lot of players playing poison at a certain time, let's just say 8 o'clock in the morning, come back after 8 hours. Sorry, come back after five to six hours, and by then they are not playing anymore. There'll be a different different group of players you play again. Now this is totally totally situational, and I cannot say for sure that it will help you. But I'm jump starting your 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 brain to think about these things because if you never th thought about it, or if, maybe if you think oh, I I don't have control over these things, I'll just accept it and I'm doomed. It's my fate. You know? Not really. Yes, it might not work ninety percent of the time, but that's the beauty of it. We can keep exploring. There are infinite ways to explore this. You cannot just say, oh no, it's this 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 solution is figured out. Not really. If it's figured out already, everyone in the comments will tell you that it's figured out. But everyone is still trying to figure things out. And if life gives you lemons, just make lemonade. And yeah, just cheer up. It'll get better. If it gets too hard, you can always talk to a friend. Find a friend in Discord which you trust. Someone who plays Axie also. And just tell everything to him or her. You know, you can you can cry, you can wail, you can whine, you can do everything. Write like a 10 paragraph essay. And, and once you do that, once you have someone to really 
release your burdens too then you can come back to the game with a clear heart and a calm head and i think i i don't know i i seem to do that if i get very frustrated i tell a friend or two i don't i don't say it in the entire group i don't want to make everyone's day bad but if you have friends you trust and they are willing and they are willing to accept whatever you have to say to him or her be ready to do the same to them when they have a bad day when they have a very very terrible game or their luck is terrible when crafting and they need someone to talk to tell their bad experience to remember to be there for them as well they'll really appreciate it. maybe they won't say it but you'll notice that they'll tell you even more things which happen to them which actually tells you that they do appreciate your company and your listening ear um your reading eyes your attention because you're reading it you're not listening to it but you know what i mean you can do it don't worry so much and i look forward to seeing you in the arena take care